Now we are supposed to draw the ray diagrams. Now for a concave mirror, how many ray diagrams can we draw? We can draw six ray diagrams for a concave mirror. Now you would ask why? Because there are six possibilities that can be there to draw the diagrams for a concave mirror because object that is placed in front of a concave mirror can be placed at six locations. Let's start counting. First of all, the object can be beyond center of curvature, first position. At center of curvature, second position. Between center of curvature and the focus, third. At focus, fourth. Between focus and the pole, fifth. And at infinity, sixth. So these are the six positions wherein we can place the object and obtain the ray diagram. So we'll start the first ray diagram when the object is placed beyond center of curvature, that means beyond C. So what we'll do is, from C to the left hand side, we'll take one centimeter approximately and we'll draw the object, which is always in the form of an arrow pointing in the upward direction and we'll name the object as AB. Now we have learned the rules, right? The moment we place the object, we take the scale and draw the incident ray parallel to the principal axis. And after reflection, where is it going to go? It is going to pass through the focus, right? So this is the first rule that we have applied. How many minimum rules are we supposed to apply? Two rules. So we'll apply the second rule, that is the incident ray passes through the focus. So now the incident ray you see passes through the focus. After reflection, what is going to happen? It is simply going to go parallel to the principal axis. So first of all, pause the video right now, draw the base diagram first and apply these two rules. I hope you have done this and I hope you have obtained the reflected rays over here. That means this is the point where the reflected rays are meeting. The point where the reflected rays meet, at that point, image is formed. So how do we draw the image? Just the way we drew the object. But this time, the image is below the principal axis. So the arrowhead should point in the downward direction. Now, we can name anything or we can give any names to the image. But what we'll do is, we'll give it a specific name. We'll call this image as A dash and B dash. Now, why do we write A dash and B dash and not PQ, XY and so on? Because we need to specify, we need to tell them that the image over here is an inverted image. So A, which was at the top, its image is now at the bottom, which is A dash, right? Similarly, B was below A, but now it is above A, which means that the image is an inverted image. So now this completes the ray diagram, but this does not complete the entire answer to the question. Because this entire question consists marks for the diagram and also the position of the image and nature of the image that we are supposed to write down. So now, how do we understand the position of the image? The position of the image needs to be found on the principal axis. Now, on the principal axis, you can see this is the image. Now, can you see it is formed between the center of curvature and the focus, right? So the image is between C and F. This is the position of the image. Now we need to talk about the nature of the image. In nature, the first question that we need to ask ourselves is, are the rays of light actually meeting? Yes, they are. So whenever the rays of light actually meet, such an image is called as a real image. And all real images are always inverted. Remember this, all real images are always inverted. Now, what about the size? The third point is the size of the image. Can you see the height of the object is one line of the notebook? But what about the image? Is it greater than one line? Is it off one line or is it less than one line? It is less than one line. That means it is a smaller image. It is a diminished image. Now this completes the entire ray diagram for object beyond C. So what is important here? What is important is the position and the nature. So when the object is placed beyond C, remember this. 
when the object is placed beyond C, the image is obtained between C and F and the nature of the image is real, inverted and diminished. Now, one more thing that we need to understand over here is that real images are those images that can be obtained on a screen. So in order to see this image, you will have to place a screen over there and then you would be able to see that particular image. So now what we'll do is we'll do the second diagram wherein the object needs to be placed at center of curvature. So now we have placed the object at center of curvature. Now what you need to do is you need to apply the first tool. So what I recommend is pause the video and apply the two rules. That is first rule that the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis and the reflective ray passes through the focus and the second rule incident ray passes through the focus and reflected rays parallel to the principal axis. Do that. I hope you have done this. Now let's try to see how to draw this diagram. First rule is incident ray parallel to the principal axis. Reflected ray then passes through the focus, right? I hope you have got this. Then the incident ray passes through the focus. Reflected ray becomes parallel to the principal axis. Now just try to match your diagram with this diagram. I'm sure that you have got the same exact diagram. If not, doesn't matter. After you practice twice or thrice, you will eventually become the masters of drawing the ray diagrams. Just make sure that you draw or pass the lines properly through the focus and you'll get the image properly that is at point C because that is the position where the image is exactly formed or the reflected rays are actually meeting and you name the image as A dash and B dash. Now after drawing the diagram, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to write down the position and nature. So what is the position of the image? How do we find that? On the principal axis. It is at C, right? So position of the object is also at C and the image is also obtained at C. What conclusion can we draw? That whenever the object is at C, the image is also at C. Now we'll write down the nature of the image. What about the nature here? Are the rays of light actually meeting? Yes, of course. So which type of image? Real image. All real images are always? Yes, absolutely correct. It is inverted. Now, what about the size? Mm. Look at the size of the object. One line of the notebook. Size of the image. One line of the notebook. That means the image is of the same size. Right? So, if in your examination, there is a question which says, draw a ray diagram to obtain an image at C. That means you are supposed to draw this diagram. If the question is, draw a ray diagram to obtain an image of same size as that of the object, you are supposed to draw this diagram. Or in the examination, if the question is, draw a ray diagram to obtain a real and inverted image of the same size, you are supposed to draw this diagram. So, the question can be in different manner for the same diagram. Just remember this, just remember the position of the object, the position of the image, and the nature of the image. Now we'll move on to the next diagram. That is object between C and F. I'm sure that you will be able to draw this entire diagram. So pause the video once again and start doing it. So I hope you have got this and this is the simplest of all. So let's try and apply the rules and obtain the image. So object is between F and C this time. So what you can do is you can place the object exactly at the center. That is one centimeters and you'll get a proper diagram. So first rule, incident ray parallel to the principal axis, the reflected ray passes through the focus. Then the incident ray passes through the focus, the reflected ray parallel to the principal axis. So this is the point where the image is formed because there the reflected rays are meeting. So you draw the image, name it as A dash and B dash because it is an inverted image. So the position of the image, where is the position of the image? It is beyond C. So we'll write beyond C. Now, nature. Are the rays of light actually meeting? Yes. So, real image. All real images are always inverted. What about the size this time? One line of the notebook is the size of the object. But the size of the image is greater than that. That means it is a magnified image. It is a bigger image. So this completes the third diagram. But remember that when the object is placed between F and C, 
where is the image formed it is formed beyond c so if in your examination there's a question which says which says draw a ray diagram to obtain a magnified image which is real and inverted <laughs> draw this diagram draw a ray diagram to obtain an image which is beyond c draw this diagram so such type of questions can be asked in your examination now we'll do the next diagram wherein the object is placed at the focus let's apply the first rule the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis so we'll draw that that is parallel to the principal axis after reflection it passes through the focus now the second rule is incident ray should pass through the focus is this ray falling on the mirror right now <laughs> no that means will it get reflected of course not that means can we apply this rule no we cannot so we'll apply the third rule that is of the center of curvature so take your scale put one point at a the other point at c and simply draw this line but do not forget to draw the arrows which are very very important this arrow over here that you see is going towards the mirror now this arrow that you see is going away from the mirror which says that the reflection is taking place in the same direction now you might see that these two rays or the reflected rays are appearing to be parallel they are only appearing to be parallel but they are actually going to meet at some point we don't know that means the image is going to be formed at a point that we don't know that means it is going to be formed at infinity but are the rays of light going to meet at infinity yes of course that is the reason the image is formed right that means the nature of the image is real image why real because they are going to meet at infinity and if it is real image it is an inverted image of course but what about the size the size of the image would be highly magnified because it is formed at infinity that means its height from the principal axis is going to be very 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 high so this completes the diagram for object at the focus now we'll place the object between focus and the pole that is f and p or p and f you can say we'll apply the first rule incident ray parallel to the principal axis reflected ray passes through the focus do not forget to draw the arrows which are very very important now again we cannot apply the second rule because the ray of light is not going to fall on the mirror we'll use the third rule that is we'll place the scale one point at a the other point at c and simply draw a straight line now here you can see that the reflected rays are moving away from each other that means they are diverging actually so are they going to meet at infinity no but if somebody stands over there and looks from there it would appear that these rays of light are coming from a point which is somewhere over here and this is the point where the image would be formed and here you can see the rays of light are not actually meeting they are appearing to meet but here you can see that the image is not inverted it is erect that means the nature of the image now has changed in all the positions previous to this or prior to this image form was real but now the moment we brought the object between the focus and the pole now you can see that the nature has changed now the position has also changed now the position of the image is behind the mirror right and are the rays of light actually meeting no they are not that means it is not a real image it is a virtual image all real images were always inverted all virtual images are going to be erect now what about the size the size is magnified right so here you can see that when we place the object within the focal length that means between focus and the pole so did you hear what i said i said within the focal length that means within focus and the pole the nature of the image would be virtual erect and magnified and the image would be formed behind the mirror now this is an example wherein the concave mirror is used in the form of shaving mirrors or the mirrors that are used by dentist wherein they place the object between the focus and the pole and they obtain a virtual erect and magnified image now we'll move on to the last diagram that is object placed at infinity now whenever the object is at infinity the rays of light appear to be parallel to each other so we'll draw the parallel ray of light and we'll pass it through the focus now obviously since the rays are going to be parallel to each other the first incident ray is parallel to the principal axis so the second ray is also going to be parallel to the principal axis and the reflected ray would pass again through the focus so where exactly is the image formed 
at the focus right so when the object is at infinity image is at focus so now what about the nature are the rays of light actually meeting yes they are so the image is a real image then whenever the image is a real image we know it is an inverted image what about the size you can say it is a point size image it is very 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 small that means it is highly diminished image so this completes all the six positions now what we are going to do is we are going to summarize all the positions and try to remember them now by summarizing we are also going to remember the position of the object and the position of the image because in your examination the questions can be in different ways right so let's try to summarize initially we place the object beyond c so when the object is beyond c where is the image between c and also the size is small when we bring the object towards the mirror that is at c you saw that the image moved away from the mirror size also slightly increased right now when the object is at c image is also at c now we place the object between c and f you see when the object is brought closer to the mirror once again the image moved away from the mirror and the size also increased now the object is between c and f and the image is beyond c so what conclusion do we draw when the object is beyond c image is between c and f and when the object is between c and f image is beyond c you can remember it in this way and also when we bring the object towards the mirror the image moves away from the mirror and the size also keeps on increasing now when you place the object at the focus image is at infinity object at focus image at infinity and obviously when we bring the object within the focal lens the image is a virtual image and when the object is at infinity image is at focus so object at infinity image at the focus object at the focus image at infinity so these were the diagrams that we have drawn and this is the summary that you need to remember so drawing the diagram is one thing that can come for ray diagrams and the summary that we have done can be used to answer the questions that is for one line one sentence answers so this completes all the ray diagrams and yes please do not forget to like share subscribe and press the bell icon